and welcome to uh, I think this is the last before Easter of our lunchtime seminars. Um, today we have uh, Dr Maria Cavallo. I think a lot of you are familiar with her work already, um, but I'll just introduce I'll introduce her. Um, so Maria graduated in architecture and urbanism from the University of Brasilia in 2001, followed by a master's degree in environmental engineering in 2009 and a PhD here at the Research Centre in, in Salford uh, in 2023. From 2004 to 2006, she did several building acoustic tests for the Brazilian hydroelectric company Furnas and has been the secretary of the Midwest Brazilian Society of Acoustics since 2023 and a member since 2008. She's also an active participant in the International Noise Awareness Day from 2011 to 2016 and is an assistant lecturer at the Faculty of Arts of UFG since 2009. Um, Maria performed architectural acoustics consulting services since 2001 alongside an acoustic engineer. Projects included auditoriums, recording, radio and television studios. And she's here today to talk about her work uh, on urban soundscape perceptions and associates, associations between those and emotional states. So without further ado, I shall hand over to Maria. Welcome, Maria. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, at this moment, I don't see anybody, <laughs> so I can concentrate as, uh, on the presentation. And today, uh, I actually have a colleague that once questioned me, why do you use your whole name, Maria Luisa de Ulloa Carvalho? It's because in Brazil, we have over 7,000 Maria Carvalhos <laughs> registered within the, um, the um, academia, um, environment and 185 Maria Luisa Carvalho. So that's why I insist in my whole name. Um, so today uh, I, I'm going to present a little bit of myself, what I've done before I arrived in Salford and I was supervised by Bill and Bruno and with this associations between urban soundscape perceptions and emotional states. As Mark has mentioned, um, I have Opa. Uh, this is my topic, so uh, the summary of what I will be presenting to do today, and um, which um, I, I, I'm very happy to be here with you. So, as he mentioned, I did uh, ar architecture and urbanism at Wenibe, which is the, is the capital of Brazil. Then I did a master's on. Uh, at Goiânia, where I currently live, and I went to the UK to do the PhD. Um, Furnas is a very um, big uh, hydroelectric company that uh, exists and uh, gives energy for the whole central Midwest and um, of the country, and also uh, the south of the country. And the, the Brazilian society uh, of acoustics. Uh, I've been there since 2008, very active at this International Awareness Day, which I did um, data collection at um, um, different places and try to explain people about uh, their health uh, and auditory health and consulting work and lecturing. This is a little bit of my portfolio. So, uh, as I mentioned, I worked at initially uh, with an uh, acoustic engineer where I drew for him. And these are two projects done by Oscar Neymar, a very famous Brazilian architect. The first one is a museum and the second one is the Superior Law Labor Court. So the museum at the top is the gallery, the art gallery where we applied some uh, sound absor absorption material at the ceiling. And at the bottom, you can see uh, set cross sections of the auditorium, where again, we put some materials to absorb sound at the levels. So these are the types of, the, of um, <clears throat> services I did. So my colleague would calculate and I would draw for him. <clears throat> this is the superior labor court so it's a very big um, building and we actually had five different courts to design and all of them i detailed one by one uh, with drawings and here is a more recent um, court that i did at goiania where i live now 
And again, I, I tried to work with different types of materials to observe all the frequencies and also work, um, um, avoid uh, uh, free parallel um, surfaces and breaking uh, and making it angled at the walls because they were parallel. Um, these, by the way, these are pictures and not um, simulations. So the, the photographer did it very well and the work was done together with another group. Um, after that, uh, since I, I, I started researching, became a lecturer, uh, I decided to work also outside of the building. And that's when I began to identify the urban scale and got and first read um, Bill's work in the Positive Soundscape Project, and where he had a multidisciplinary team where an artist was present and people from this, the health um, area as well. And I started to investigate local positive soundscapes in Goiania and identified that we had many different parks. And this is one of the parks that I, I went to and inspired, got inspired about it. I identified the levels were very low, like from 45 below in LAQ. <clears throat> and, and I got, this is what it looks like from the top. So at the back, you have the center of Goiania and the, you see there's a lots of dense vegeta vegetation <clears throat> within the city. So with, uh, after I got, I went to the location, identified quiet places, I reinterpreted this soundscape and collected um, not only video, but audio, and we made a proposal of an art installation. And he, uh, this art installation was done, and, and while I was interpreting, we had, I considered that the traffic sound is something that's constant within the urban scenario, almost like a blanket and a background sound. Uh, like a lo-fi, and we are discussing it uh, possibly of how it's blended, all these different types of sounds together. And I correlated these sounds with the traffic light, where the green light represents a soft uh, birds singing, where you can hear here a bird call of Bing TV, which is a very popular bird in, in urban sites called Good to See You <laughs> in translating. Can you hear this video? Mark? No, I think the audio, the audio is gone again. You might want okay. to click the let share. Let me just, yeah, let me share the audio. Go, I'll start over. So in the foreground of this um, sample, we, you could hear Bang TV, which is, yeah? So that's Bang TV. And it's interesting because I put this um, audio in, in a, uh, two, two art galleries, and in one of them, I left the door open, and we actually had a bird coming inside of the gallery as an echo of what he was hearing. So it was an amazing experience to be uh, have, having birds actually interacting with the installation. Uh, and so this, is, this video came on the scenery when people were quiet. Then when people started to be more, talk a little bit more, you had a medium, which would be a yellow, and the rustling of the trees, of bamboo trees, I, I collected and put it as the sound and the scenery of the second video. And last uh, is when the urban sound of automobiles, especially motorcycles in Goiania, we had a high level, high number of motorcycles. 
uh, it, it they, the invasions of these big uh, automobile sounds were present. <laughs> So these three videos were presented at this, this location. I got some tires in the, in the settings, bamboo um, parts, and also people would be watching in the screen. And then if they were quiet, medium, or noisy, uh, you would see the green, yellow, or light video. So I had a sound 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 level meter that would collect the audio and identify through a spectrum a, a sound of, of the a level, a noise level, a sound level, and then it would trigger to send a, a, one of the three videos. And in the first exhibition, um, people were very shy. So I actually created a tablet where we had the red, yellow, and green um, audios, examples of audio. So people would actually have the opportunity to see all of the three videos. Because if I did not put this in this installation, people would be so quiet that they, they only see the green video. But this is a little girl that did it, uh, used the tablet. So that's um, my one of my first art installations inspired in positive soundscapes. The thesis, um, now going to my thesis, I an overview in soundscapes, it's definitely something that demands a multidisciplinary team. And it's interesting because soundscapes, it, it's different from noise, environmental noise, because we use sound as a resource. And in my thesis, I also try to identify if we could help urban design in a positive way and work with the subjective responses. This aiming also with the quality of life, and in a way we can begin to characterize and maybe also catalogs of how we can add to platforms um, some of these scenarios. Uh, and since I'm working with image as well, it's also video, 360 videos. Um, so my motivation was to work with health and well-being, and I identified there are people, a lot of, there's a lot, a very big movement within Europe to uh, preserve natural places that represent the calm scenario, but not a lot of studies with vibrancy, which is the more eventful scenarios. So that's all, another way, another place that I tried to identify within Manchester. Um, I actually did five experiments. And, but here today, I'm only going to show you three because the first two were more like pilots. But I, as you can see, uh, the initial one was to identify the locations where I would study in chaotic science. And then I started two tests at the bottom. As you can see, different layers up to the last one, which is the one that I did in the laboratory. Um, my contributions are that uh, working with population density, we could of, to, of urban soundscapes, we could use virtual reality with self reports and also electroencephalogram to complement these self reports. Um, these are my research questions. There are quite a few because I did quite a lot of work, but uh, we would gradually see within uh, the presentation. Um, my the background in general, um, it is important to to see where it came from, soundscape, uh, and then where it's at nowadays. Um, we're actually uh, actually there is an ISO group that's doing a fourth edition um, with soundscape str strategies, and and it's very uh, rich since the two thousands. Uh, this. The, the number of studies of soundscape began to increase a lot. 
Um, also, soundscape design, since I want to um, identify possible positive locations and give this as a tool for urban designers, it was something I tried to understand better. And, and I went through these topics and also emotional responses to soundscapes. Some of them are already in, in some studies, but others haven't been studied as much. So these are basically um, what I looked into before I, I began my study. Um, regarding the EEG approach to soundscape, there is a part that um, I had definitely a, a, a big challenge for me to work with EEG. And so uh, I, I work with uh, groups I, uh, of people that are experts on it. So I don't do my work alone. Usually I have, uh, I consult many people. And uh, I, I, I try to understand a little bit better EEG regarding how it's transmitted and identified that alpha activity in some places people would relate to relaxation, but it still needs to needs more investigation. It's not something like uh, everybody uh, says the same thing, but there are quite a lot of literature that already indicates that um, uh, valence and natural sounds, natural soundscapes are related to high alpha activity. Uh, the experimental methods, um, this is like the workflow that I did. Initially, the survey, which is just a, 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 a normal survey with paper and pen, and so people would, that did in, in 2018 when I arrived in Salford. Then uh, in two, when I identified the locations, I went to record them. And then I did a field recordings, um, time synchronization, stimulus se selection, audio calibration, and so forth. And in a way, all of these, most of these steps were done in a um, more systematic way. Only in the stimulus selection, it could be considered that it could be a little bit more, so, uh, more subjective because it, it was, I was, I, I tried to identify it from my own per perception what where what types of objects sound, sound objects represented a rich in diversity identity and character and also i try, i identified empty and busy and medium conditions uh, so i can move forward in relating the samples to be presented i worked also with first order ambisonic equation but when i applied in vr i worked with binaural so a, a it, it, it initially was recording in, in uh, spatial audio, but then it went to binaural. Um, I also worked with, uh, at the bottom, you can see um, the softwares and the types and the duration of my samples, because in the first moment of the Manchester Online, it was during the pandemic. So I collected the data in 2019, 2020, uh, and since I couldn't stop, uh, I had to continue my work, and it was quite an interesting work, well, as I'll show in a bit. And afterwards, af a little bit after pandemic in 2022, I went to, to lab to the lab. Um, so this is the equipment at in the first moment um, before COVID, uh, with a very simple camera, just two lenses. And people complain about this, the, the low resolution of these video videos. So I went to work with the Insta 316 camera, the same mic field microphone, but different recorders. And finally, these are the questions that I use, as I showed previously. I gradually changed up to the moment of the last experiment where I also tried the Plutic emotional wheel. Um, these are my, my samples, my participants. Initially, I had the staffs of uh, uh, acoustic research and also the postgraduate students where I worked in the fishbowl. <laughs> and secondly, I went to the Peel Park and the library at Salford Uni and got people that were outside. Third was a, a small event, public event, where I got uh, some VR responses. And uh, fourth was online. And finally, uh, at the student and semi anechoic chamber at uh, Salford, I did the VR and EEG experiment. This is the pipe. This is the flow for the EEG experiment. It quite actually, when if you look at it, it had many, many different steps. 
And when in the beginning, I actually tried to work with three uh, types of population densities, empty, medium and busy. Uh, initially, there were four locations because of 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 the pandemic COVID people changed drastically how the bus station worked. So I worked on only three locations and three densities, but when we were at the lab, the experiment became very long. So my fifth, five of my the five participants in the beginning were, were very tired by the end. So I decided to take the middle condition, which is medium. So I only work with busy and empty. And this is the workflow initially setting the gel in the cap and doing some training, some general information and a, a, a questionnaire for training. Then I actually started the EEG recordings where um, in, in the way I try to um, have a, a many repetitions to get more um, a, an average of it so that there was a break in between the sessions. So you had one, two, five sessions. And then in each session, the task was for the person to feel and think how they would feel when they are immersed in the place. And in between the videos, it came a blank and people were, I asked people to relax within them. And again, EEG is very sensitive to movement. So I would ask them to be as still as possible. And in between uh, experiments, I would give them a break and to relax. And I offered snacks and to stretch out as well. Um, uh, after I collected this data, I had to pre-process the EEG data. And this is the workflow of the pre of the that I did uh, according to literature that I studied, and also uh, uh, a very good pipeline that Makoto uh, does in uh, at the EEG lab community. Um, when I, I calculated and got to the power spectrum of the um, of the uh, result, I went to look initially at one participant. I actually had 30, 36. And, and then um, I began to think there was a lot of data, 32 electrodes was um, that would that I needed to work with. So I try I decided since I had a short time to present my my thesis. Um, I, I reduced and simplified the data with regions. So the frontal region, as you can see at the top, uh, I worked with 10 different regions and I, I, I identified that the alpha power was were, were more ex, uh, visually uh, identified than of the other types of um, uh, frequencies, brain frequencies. So here you can see that the empty plaza, the empty part, were quite high in alpha power. And, and these are, are some things that I will discuss in one of my major findings. So I, I, in a way, I reduced the number of data points and I worked with regions and I identified uh, that alpha was more clear uh, to analyze. So I started with alpha, but I have also uh, the other brain frequencies that I still need to look into. My results are that in the first experiment, as I mentioned, I selected the four different locations. It was the Market Street for the busy location, Piccadilly Gardens for the vibrant location, People Park uh, in a bus stop from Salford in front of uh, at, at Salford. At these three, four locations, I did the three MO, three types of population densities, empty, medium, and busy. And you can see at the side, the sound pressure level in DB. Um, after the sec, uh, another interesting experiment was the Manchester Online 2020. And here I, I got the chance to work with all of the all of the um, population densities, the medium as well. Uh, since I had 12 different conditions, because there were four sceneries and three conditions, three population densities in each of them. It was quite a big experiment to, to send out and online. So I decided to separate uh, in two groups. So 
one group would have two locations and the other one had the other two. But the interesting, and here I showed the significant results where we can see that gradually with the number of people, the eventful scale increased at the plaza, which is the Piccadilly Garden, and also at the street, Pedestrian Street, which is Market Street. Again, uh, for arousal, which is the, when the people get more excited, uh, uh, people would get uh, ex uh, increase with the number of people and all in the park and the street. Uh, also, uh, on from monotonous to vibrant at the at the plaza, you had uh, it was possible to observe an increase. And regarding uh, the park, we had the opposite. As the number of people increased, it became more chaotic. So these are the general uh, um, results from the Master Online, but I also had the opportunity to analyze differences among Brazilian participants and people from other country. And then from the 28 uh, semantic scales that we I studied, 12 of them were significantly different from the other countries. And here are them and mediums and, and as you can see. Um, for the last experiment, which is the EEG and VR experiment, um, I, it was possible to see, because there I, I worked with the PAQs and Plutic Emotional Wheel in the questionnaire. So I had my sample of 36 participants. And in here, uh, the Piccadilly Gardens had all of the PAQs were significantly different among the population densities. For the part, annoying, was the only PAQ that was not present. And just to emphasize, perceived affective qualities that was the ISO um, represent, uh, represents. I, uh, also, I compared uh, different locations. So I compared the, usually we would think that different locations have different results. So they would be significantly different. However, uh, for the busy park and busy plaza, there were a lot, there were five different PAQs that were rated in a similar way. So this is something I have to look into further why this is happening. But also in the empty park and the empty plaza, the same thing happened. Five different PAQs were similarly rated. Um, these, this is the ISO's um, pleasantness and eventfulness scale. It's a formula that they put in, in um, part three. And at the, the, the black is for the pedestrian street, blue for the plaza, Piccadilly Garden, and green for the park. As you can see, when it's empty, it's lower in eventfulness. And then when it when you put when there's more people, it increase in eventfulness. And you can actually see that it shifts from one quadrant to another. This is the average, the, the medium of it. So you can see that the street went from calm to chaotic. The plaza and the park were both in the calm and both of them went to vibrant, which is also very interesting to observe. Um, for the emotional, the emotional wheel, uh, it was interesting to see that joy was significant. People significantly agreed that joy represented a busy plaza and serenity represented an empty park. And both the plaza and the park were rated as empty and and Plaza and Park were rated at, at, at busy for joy and serenity. For the uh, the pedestrian street, busy and interesting, people were interested on it, but it was not significantly uh, um, for agreed. And for the empty street, people were bored to see, uh, but not significantly. Finally, my um, AEG results, initially I, I'm still working with um, uh, trying to work basic statistics. Initially, I tried to understand if there was a normality in results of alpha power, but there was a um, very constant, not, not non-normal, there were non-normal material, non-normal data. So I decided to run a cluster analysis and just to group people. And I had three of them that were quite um, uh, out of range of the other two clusters which um, very high level, so I decided to not use them. And then these two other ones, I, I began to analyze. There was a significant increase 
in alpha power when in empty locations in some brain regions. The first, first cluster, there were three regions that middle perimetal, perietal, uh, middle occipital and right occipital that were significantly different in, among uh, empty and busy condition. Um, the second cluster, they had at eight different locations that significantly are were different between empty and busy condition. So uh, initially, uh, I considered that high alpha power in empty locations may indicate participants were more relaxed in empty sites. So this is my initial con uh, conclusions. And for, for an EEG, my with summing uh, uh, at, the, at the end, if when I look back into the whole thesis, as I, did, I demonstrated previously, you could see that people, sh the number of people shift the scores uh, as I presented in the last experiment. Uh, the plaza busy uh, in the park as well were rated as vibrant, but which indicates a good urban design tool. And in both of these cases, there were a, a lots of children. So maybe the uh, ad um add types of uh, to uh, equipment for children in urban scenario becomes a more vibrant location so it's still something i need to investigate further because that was something that i didn't uh, actually observe at the beginning but it actually it might be an indication also as, as a vibrant place um i also uh, 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 challenge and obstacle <laughs> in the beginning and uh, when I started to analyze the EEG was the line noise that came from the head mounted device of the VR set. So there was a uh, uh, 650 hertz from the electricity and I went through all four different types of filters to uh, eliminate this line noise. And I, at the end, I, the best performance was with a low pass filter, uh, and then uh, uh, results were cleaner and, and, and more coherent. Uh, all of my findings uh, are in line with the Soundscape community, and one of my major findings is this high EEG alpha power uh, in occipital regions. However, there are some things that I need to I need further investigation. Uh, initially, this may indicate that they were relaxed and calm in, in, in where in these places. But another thing to observe is that nature nature sounds were present in these locations as well. So for the plaza, it was the sounds of the water, the fountain, and for the park were the sounds of animals. Meanwhile, the occipital regions is still something that, that I, is controversial because uh, some literature says that these uh, alpha powers are observed in, in, in relaxed states at, the, at these regions, brain regions, but um, uh, this, the, the, these locations in the brain are also where we, we process visual cues. So it might it, there might be a possibility that my results are result are come from the the visual um, VR head mounted device and not it's not necessarily from the soundscape stimuli. So this I need to go into further investigation. Uh, other unexpected findings were that as I mentioned before, um, the Brazilian participants in the uh, experiment online were rated some uh, like, as I mentioned, 12 out, out of the 28 um, uh, PAQs higher than other countries. And this is also happening in for the French and Indonesian uh, community uh, because I, I worked also with the Soundscape Attribute Translating Translation Project. And so it's something that's happening with other languages as well. So it can be, uh, other cultural difference needs further investigation as well. Uh, regarding the educational level effect, uh, I actually observe that uh, cluster two, uh, the the group of uh, of people were had highly educated. They were highly educated individual, 
they de demonstrated more consensus in brain activity. Eight out of 10 regions were significantly different than those with lower education from cluster one, where they had two out of the 10 brain regions. This is also something I have to look into further. Um, basically, this is what I brought for you today. <laughs> I was training yesterday. I got to, um, I'll stop sharing now so I can see you. Okay. I'm open to questions. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, Absolutely fascinating. Everyone's clapping. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear them. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being there. I'm oh, very happy to see everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Do we have any questions from anybody online? If you'd maybe like to raise your hand digitally or put a uh, question in the chat, or perhaps if anybody in G10 has any questions, they can raise their hand on the screen. I'm not sure. Any questions at all? Question from G11. Hi, Maria. Ah, OK, G11. Yes. Um, thank you for the talk. <laughs> Uh, it's just a question about methodology. Um, in the lab experiment with the EEG, I, um, you mentioned, I think, that with the EEG sensors that um, participants had to be quite still, but also with a virtual reality headset, you kind of would expect people to be looking around the environment. Um, I just wondered if if there's kind of like a, a methodological conflict there and like how, you know, you might envisage that being addressed in future experiments? Uh, 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 in what I did is actually first, as I, as I, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned that we would first, I would let them do it freely. So I initially I did the upper, I gave them the opportunity to look around in the first part. And then I asked the questions regarding the PAQs and emotions, plutic emotions. Then at, I did the EEG afterwards, so I separated them. I, I didn't put them together. And when we were in the second part, they already knew what they were looking at. So they would ask me to be still. And I, I actually, I was, while I was doing my uh, planning, my, my this experiment, I actually I saw some um, uh, gadgets that people would put like the chin into a, a, a form of, of of rest <laughs> so it looked like you actually you had like a cassette a, a headset that they that put the head still so uh, there are some types of of uh, alternatives for to in reduce um the fatigue when people have to be still for a long time so uh, first of all uh, uh, separated the part where you can look around and second of all uh, i could have put another a chin rest as well but at the time I, I didn't i didn't have time at the time i hope i did i answer your question you did thank you yeah um mark could you um uh, should I look into the yeah, chat? I'm, I'm on mute. There we go. Yes. Okay. So I was just going to go to the chat first. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's yeah, we have a quite question a lot of things uh, in the chat uh -huh. from, from Antonio. Um, what was the biggest challenge when processing the EEG data? So a semi related question. Ah, first, it was the, I think, the line noise, definitely the line noise. Because uh, as I mentioned, I, I went through four different filters to get to that uh, result. Uh, it, uh, my Viva panel actually uh, asked me to <laughs> emphasize this because um, since the, uh, there were many because the pipeline for Makoto he uses clean not clean line it is a plugin so um, but it, it it didn't make a difference when I put it I cleaned the the um, the data with the clean line it just maintained so it's a very high peak at 50 hertz. So that took me quite a while. So I consulted like many different persons of EEG community and, and up to the moment where uh, Makoto, uh, which is a, um, a colleague, uh, he uh, gave me a good, a good alternative and solved that. Um, 
I still consider that I have more challenge to go with EEG. So, uh, for example, I'm doing topographs of uh, EEG with the, where you can see the spectrum in colors with over uh, overlapped ahead. So that's something I still I hope to do, but uh, with uh, collaborations of, of of other expert experts as well. Did I answer the question? And Elliot, is he, did she answer the question? <laughs> Not sure if he's. Yep, there we go. Yes, good answer. Apparently, um, there's um, Bill. Uh, Bruno actually asked me. I'll go back to Bruno in a bit. Yes, Bill. Okay. Yeah, I. Hi, Maria. Um, hi. Great, great talk. Um, having having my question is is about um, I suppose about physiological versus behavioural measures. Um, you know, Ale Alex Landowska, you know, said to me and Trevor, uh, when we were interviewing her for a job, actually, that, that just asking people if they, uh, she said, I've read your work and, and it's and it's quite naive. You just ask people if they like the sounds or not, and then you write down what they say. And as if you believe them, you should look inside their heads instead and and so now having looked inside people's heads <laughs> do, do you do you think that that's is that a better way of, of doing it than than just asking people how how they feel uh, or or you know if the two correlate i mean eeg is a lot of trouble so should we give it up and just go back to asking people how they feel what's your view uh, I consider that I still haven't finished my data analysis, so I still have much more to analyze. But um, and also, once uh, one of the colleague, I think Paige from the psychology department, she mentioned that it's not so straightforward. You can't see emotions through uh, brain frequencies. It's not something you can just simply uh, correlate it, and, and that's over. So um, it, I, I, I would still need uh, more uh, analysis to respond to the question in a way. But um, since there are the, the fact of uh, these relations to relaxations, even though it's not so, um, the literature is still not solid regarding this, um, it's still a beginning of identifying at least because we are, we recently in, in, in worldwide, we are becoming more mentally fatigued. If you think about it, you know, we're over overstressed and over um, so much to do, and uh, so mentally, we we if we identify a, a way that soundscapes acts actually makes you become more relaxed. And this is happening a lot or with music therapy and in other types of meditations and all. So it is possible that we can, can still continue to use these types of physio physiological experiments. Yes, but I, I, I still it's not so straightforward. I think it, it needs more uh, uh, investigation. So it's, it's not something that I would give up <laughs> because it did. Um, but is this is something, but it is something um, that needs to be covered better in a way. Yeah. Did I answer you. your question? Yeah? Yes. Thanks. Okay. Well, uh, Maria, do we have any other questions at all? Um Bruno put it in the chat. Mm, for uh, I've seen that, but if, if the B format syn synthesized in a high order ambisonics. If so, which order? It was first order uh, ambison, uh, high order ambisonics. So that's the response of the first one. Uh, presume that listening was not head tracked. Were listening looking straight ahead up? Uh, it was head, uh, there was a, uh, the head track from my understanding is when I turn my head, the audio changes places. That happened, and but during the EEG experiment, uh, everybody was looking at forward. Yeah, uh, did I answer the question, Bruno? Hi, Maria. Uh, you you Hi, answered Bruno. the questions. You answered the questions very well, but they were to a previous seminar. But they apply here in exactly the same way. Although I knew the answers because okay. I knew your work. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, that explains why I didn't for, see the questions. For another seminar, I think for Damien or something last week. This is right. great. Are there, are there any yeah. other previous questions you'd like to answer? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we might have one on FDTD simulations. Uh, so. Somebody asked here, NG, I don't know, uh, Nathan Green, uh, Nathan Green, he Nathan, asked how many Nathan. participants on the online experiment? 155. I consider it quite nice to have 155, but they were separated in uh, um, 65 in one group and 70 in another. And then within these two groups, I separated Brazilians from other countries. So I actually balanced uh, the sample size as well. It was really nice to, to see. So, uh, a question were... from, from uh -huh. Lisa Lavia. Lisa, Hi, like Maria. To... Yeah. Hi, Hi, Maria. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. Hi. Amazing Hi. work. I wanted to ask if you could elaborate a bit more on any insights you had about the difference in the demographic, the, the profiles from the different demographic groups. You said the highly educated responded in one way and less educated in another. There's quite a vast difference. And I just wondered uh, what your insights were in terms of your data um, and future work on that. So. It was very, we actually joked about this during the Viva exam, uh, because uh, do uh, high educated people think differently? And in, in a way, the data, EEG data, demonstrated that yes. So I, uh, however, uh, I'm not a so, uh, so sociologist or anthropologist, but there is a tendency nowadays on the psychology area and, and human um, area to say about the weird population. This is something that I, I since I'm not from uh, an anthropologist, a sociologist, this might be indicating that we still need to <clears throat> understand that, yes, people from high educated levels are being more studied than others and which is the Western educated, rich, industrialized, rich, democrat, democratic population. Um, but I, I am not a, a, an expert in this area. So it would be interesting to identify if um, I, I try to understand if age had a, pro, a difference as well, no differences, uh, gender as well, there was no significant differences, but the education was quite high, and I still would need to have a, a uh, um, have a, a talk with somebody from the soci sociology or anthropology to think and discuss about this the weird uh, population. So, because we are all in a way weird <laughs> here as as we speak. So, um, that uh, did I answer your question? Um, yes, thank you. In part, I was also wondering, were there specific soundscape attributes that you felt were perhaps, I guess, more desired by or noticed by yeah. one population over the other? Mm, yeah, uh, I, to distinguish, uh, since I, I actually, I, I didn't have a question to identify what you liked more. I, 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 the, within my questionnaire, maybe I, if I had, I could identify identify in a more clear way. Just this last EEG and VR experiment at the end, I did put which one you liked best, but I didn't get the chance to analyze this data yet. So I need to give you a, a follow to back <laughs> uh, in the future. And by the way, I didn't ca quite catch your name. Oh, me, it's Lisa Lavia. Ah, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I my yeah. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Good to so see you. So I'll take you to that, Lisa. Um, I'll take a look back to that and give you a return. Okay, Lisa, about okay. Where, okay. what people preferred, because I do recall that I had this question at the end of the experiment. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Thank you Maria. for your presence. I am very happy to see that you're here with us. So exciting. Good to hear <laughs> your report. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, there's a question from Joshua here written. 
Could you extend the method to identify the acoustic center of multiple distant sources? He said he had to go. <laughs> ah, yeah. That's so a map for the previous previous seminar. Oh, oh. Yeah, that, that wasn't a question to you, Maria. Oh, the the chat goes way back through all the previous. Ah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, Duncan. Yeah, Duncan. So I I I'm sorry. I was looking into things previously. I, I, I'm definitely being misrepresented. This is not a question from me. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no further questions. <laughs> right. Well, if there are no, no further questions for the present seminar today, then I suggest we all um, thank Maria again for a very good talk, a very mm -hmm. interesting discussion. Okay, thank you very much.